Thank you for everyone joining us today. We're excited to have you with us. Um, today's virtual learning course is Surveying Technology in the AEC Industry. My name is Sarah Snaley with Timmins Group and I will be moderating today's session. Um, just a few housekeeping items before we get started. This program is provided via both audio and web conference and will last approximately 60 minutes, including Q&A. So if you have questions at any point during today's presentation, you may submit them via the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and we'll answer them as we go through the presentation. So feel free to just um, submit them as you see fit. Um, also, please note this presentation is worth one AIA HSW credit. Certificates of completion will be sent out via email um, from me after the presentation, so be on the lookout for those as well. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our speakers for today, for today Mark Snyder and Jeff Smeraldo. Jeff, or sorry, Mark, take it away. Hey, thank you, Sarah. Okay, so like she said, my name is Mark Snyder. I am the uh, survey group leader here at Timmins Group for the Richmond location. Um, I've been with Timmins Group for, for almost 25 years. I'm a licensed surveyor in Virginia, North Carolina, and Kentucky. Uh, I've been working with laser scanning since 2012, which was when we got our first scanner. Uh, later on, Jeff Smeraldo, which is our Northern Virginia group leader, We'll be covering hybrid total stations and the Amberg system. A little bit about Timmins Group. Timmins Group is headquarters in, headquartered in the Richmond area. We have 16 offices located across the U.S. Uh, Survey-wise, we run 45 fully equipped survey crews um, and we have 28 licensed surveyors. All right, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go back through some of the history of laser scanning, what laser scanning is. Um, I'm gonna talk about some of the the software that we use, and then also give some project examples. Um, at the very end of my portion, I'll do a little bit of live demo, um, showing some of the software. Uh, so, what is laser scanning? Uh, laser scanning, you'll hear it referred to as HDS, LIDAR. Um, HDS is high definition surveying. Um, you also hear it called ground-based LIDAR. LIDAR is light detecting and ranging. You'll hear it called terrestrial LIDAR. Um, it allows you to collect large volumes of accurate data at a rapid pace. Um, it, it measures distance by illuminating the targets with the pulse laser light and measure the reflected pulses with the sensor. Uh, the resulting point cloud can could contain millions of points. Um, that kind of depends on the resolution and the settings that we use, and I'll get into that in a little while. Um, off to the side here on this slide, you'll see this is where we were scanning Richmond International Raceway. Uh, this was a, basically it was an infield survey. Um, it was a perfect application for laser scanning because almost everything except the grass you see is hard surface, it's asphalt, walls. Um, but we used laser scanning to collect the data and then we extracted all that, that data for, for design files. Um, quick history, um, the scanner you see on the left, that's a, an older scanner that's, that's probably from, give you an idea, maybe the late 90s, it was a Cyrax. Um, Back in those days, they were either looked similar to this. Some of them even came on a, a cart. They were, you know, very large, um, took a lot of battery power to run them. Uh, maybe something similar to a car battery. Um, the computer that it took for the time period would had to be really high powered uh, to be able to manage the data. And the data that it collected was a little bit slower um, than what we can do now. Uh, at the end of the day, the data itself was, it was pretty clean. Uh, it looks very similar to what we collect now. Um, the only difference is um, now we can collect it at a faster pace. You know, the, the battery power lasts longer. They're smaller batteries. You know, your, your standard computer can usually manage a point cloud or maybe if you, you might have to do some small upgrades. Um, here on the, the right side is one of our scanners. Um, that's actually our C10. We have three laser scanners at the firm. Um, one of them is a C10, we, we have a P40, and then we also have a P50. Um, we have one that primarily stays in Northern Virginia, 
one here in Richmond, and then there's one at Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, but we do travel. Uh, laser scanning travels pretty well, so we can, you know, pack it up and travel. You can fly with it. You can, you know, we can pretty much go to work anywhere in the United States. Uh, so that's a kind of gives you a little idea of what it used to look like and uh, and what it looks like now. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the software um, real quick. This uh, we use, you know, it's all Leica products, Leica software. Um, so this is Cyclone Navigator. This is how we manage our projects. Um, that's on the left side. On the right side is Cyclone Model. Um, that's the what we use to view all the point clouds. Um, we can cut it into pieces. We can extract data from it. We can modify it. Um, but we use that pretty much on every point cloud project that we work on. Um, the, the, the point cloud there to the right, just that was working on some Amtrak um, rails that had a lot of, you know, really dense utility lines crossing over top. So we were able to collect all that data. And I'll have more examples about projects similar to that coming up. These are uh, the top screen there. That is, that is register. So register is how we link uh, multiple scans together. So whether or not we do two scans or 100 scans, we can use register to, to link those together. Um, so we do a scan in one spot. If we have three or four common points or common targets that we locate and we move the scanner to another spot, and locate the same three or four common points or targets, we can register those together and, and link them together like building blocks. Um, we can do hundreds of scans like this. We can make our way through buildings, around buildings, and we'll use the register to, to put them together. It's, it's very accurate. Usually the, the errors between putting the scans together is, is measured in thousands of a foot. Um, there at the bottom is TrueView, which I'll get into a little bit more. I'm gonna actually have a little bit of a live demo on the TrueView. That is a, a free download that anybody can download. Um, it operates in Internet Explorer. Um, if we take photographs with the scanner um, and you download the free download, you can almost view it almost like a Google Street View. Um, you can take measurements from the scan, you can take a 360 view, you can look around. Um, it's not design grade, but it's definitely good for planning. Um, it does give you an idea of, you know, maybe what a site looks like. You can take notes, but I will, uh, there towards the end, I'm going to do a little bit of a live demo on that. Um, moving on here on the left side, we, uh, you know, being mainly a civil firm, we work in civil 3D, so we use a, um, a Leica add-on called CloudWorks, and we can import clouds into AutoCAD. This helps us for topographic surveys, for extracting data. Um, once we bring it into Civil 3D, we can limit the size of the point cloud. Kind of how you see there, it's a, a square, a box. You can box it off. We can flip it up on its side. We can change load limits, densities, things like that. But this is how we, you know, for the most part, extract the data that we use for, for topographic surveys. Um, on the right is 3D Reshaper. Um, this comes up a lot on building moder monitoring or something where you have to maybe compare multiple clouds. Um, a lot of times we will go out and scan something and then you go and scan it again uh, to see if it's moved or something has shifted. Um, maybe bricks are coming loose or something like that. We'll use 3D Reshaper and I, I have some other examples coming up here real quick on, on that. This is, a, this is a recap. This is a screenshot of recap. This is an Autodesk product. Uh, this is real popular with our deliverables. A lot of our clients have recap because it comes along in the Autodesk suite. Um, we can dump almost any raw point cloud that we have into recap. There's, you know, you can make limit boxes, you can cut it into pieces, you can export it. Um, so a lot of our clients like this. Um, they're fly, you can do fly throughs through the data. Um, so it, it's been a really valuable tool, but this is one that we get asked about a lot. That's the, they always say, do we have a RCP file? And uh, that's what they're, what they're asking for. 
Um, this is a list here of our some of our available sources uh, services. Um, I'm going to have examples on on many of these. Um, a lot of the key ones, is, you know, the topographic mapping. Um, laser scanning plays a big part in collecting data for topographic mapping, and then, you know, building information modeling, uh, and then you know some of these other examples you see here. We'll get to as as we go along. Uh, topographic surveys. Uh, this is the the gateway project. Uh, this is in the, the city of Richmond and laser scanning was, was used to collect all the data for, for the topographic survey so it could be used for design. Uh, this was a perfect scanning job because as you can see there on the right it was it's kind of a busy block. It had a parking lot. Um, there was a lot of traffic. Uh, we were able to use laser scanner to stay off to the side, collect the data, we did go down on a weekend when the parking lot was closed. So, you know, we didn't have all the cars in the way, even though we can cut the cars out of the scan data, that's not a problem. But much like, like the Richmond International Raceway, everything's hard surface. Um, so laser scanning was perfect for this job. Um, on the left there is just some more pictures. That's a screenshot up top. That is the, the raw point cloud. Um, nothing had been cleaned out at that point. Um, you see that it, it collected data on all the surrounding buildings. You know, basically anything in the line of sight of the scanner uh, was collected. We probably did around 20 scans altogether for this for this project. Uh, the picture below it's just another picture of what the parking lot looked like, and down at the bottom is a again the raw point cloud. You can see the surrounding buildings. Um, there was no cars there because it was it was over the weekend. The picture on the left is what is there now. Um, that's what the, the finished product looked like. Um, the upper right is, is a print of what our topographic map looked like. Uh, we were able to extract all the data from the point cloud, uh, generate a, a DTM, show all the existing features, and for the most part, it looks exactly like a survey that we did traditionally but everything that was shown on the map, anything from paint stripes to trees to parking spots was collected from the point cloud. Uh, there at the bottom right, that shows the, a trimmed out piece of the point cloud. When we're processing a big job like this, um, typically we'll cut it into smaller manageable pieces. Uh, they have you know, some pretty good tools um, within Cyclone uh, to cut out any cars or any people or any trash, any noise that's not on the surface and get it down to where, you know, as you can see there, we could easily bring that into AutoCAD, draw the, the parking spots. You can see the, 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 uh, the arm there for the, for the gate, and we would pull all that information just straight from the, from the point cloud. Uh, more about, you know, topographic surveys, you know, and, and hopefully, what um the point I'm trying to get all across on this is that you know we use laser scanning a lot to collect um, collect items that are in difficult areas or maybe have safety concerns where you just can't put a man there um, just because either current safety requirements or it's just not safe. Um, so we use laser scanning a lot for to collect hard to reach data. Uh, this is this is Rocky Pen. This is also here in Virginia. Uh, this is a rock quarry. Um, we had to do some mapping on this. They needed to do a topographic map, very detailed, of that slope that's shown in the right. Um, you may be able to tell there's been some blasting done there. Uh, they did the blasting. Um, they were actually putting a spillway down here, a concrete spillway. And the problem they had is when they did the blasting, the rock actually broke away a lot more than what they thought. Uh, so they had their design plans already. They knew what the elevations of the spillway were supposed to be. And now their existing conditions are not where they're supposed to be because when they blasted it, 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 a lot more went away than what they expected. So they hired us to help them figure out what the difference was as far as in concrete, the amount of material it was going to take to fill that in. Uh, so we saw this as a, a perfect laser scanning opportunity. 
Uh, you can see there on the left, we did this just with the laser scanning, laser scanner sitting off on the side uh, on the road. Took all the, collected all the data. Uh, once we brought it into the office, we were able to generate the 3D mesh that you see there on the right. Uh, this is very detailed. You can see that, you know, the point density was so tight that once we meshed it, you could see almost every little rock, individual rocks. Uh, we turned this over to the client. They were able to calculate what the difference was in concrete and other material that they needed. Uh, so it was a very successful project. Uh, there on the left is just the, the scanner again, and that's one of our bipods um, sitting on a control point uh, that we were using as a, a common target. Uh, topographic surveys on roads and highways. Uh, laser scanning comes into play a lot on roads. Uh, again, because they're, they're busy, we can work along interstates, we can work in a very busy intersection uh, from the side. From off the side, we don't have to have actual guys out in the pavement. These upper two slides, when we did the, the laser scanning on this, was full busy traffic. Um, you know, there was probably, you know, 50 cars collected in the scan. Uh, we used the software to eliminate all that and be left with just the surface. Uh, we took that data, would bring it into AutoCAD with, with CloudWorks, and we can you know, map the, the paint stripes, the curb and gutter, um, get elevations on cross sections of the road. Um, this works really good on these type of roads because sometimes we have certain stations that we have to use, center lines where we need to collect the data in a certain point. Um, we're not trying to stake those out and manually put a guy in the field. We can just collect the whole thing and then it becomes an office exercise. Uh, so that's, that's those. You can see the crosswalk. Um, we can accurately map crosswalks. You can pick up valves. Uh, a lot of our projects they, that we have underground utilities marked on, you can see the underground utilities. Um, these two scans up top, um, they're in intensity mode, which I'll talk about a little more later. Um, we can take pictures with the scans and have them applied to it, which is what the bottom left picture is. That's actually a point cloud with colors from the camera um, projected onto the points. Uh, so, for example, if we had a bunch of utilities painted across the street, there were different colors, we could take pictures with that and very easily pick out you know, whether or not it was water or, or power. Uh, so the bottom left, that was working on a, a bridge survey in Charlotte. Um, they were, it was a, a clearance issue. So really, really easy way to collect that is to use laser scanning. We set off, set up off the side of the road, probably only did one to two scans on this. And we can at any point take a measurement from any one of those beams to the ground. A uh, funny thing about that bridge is one of those beams is actually, and I don't know why, what the story is behind it, but is about a half a foot off. It's about a half a foot higher than what it should be. If you look at it in the field, you can't see it. You just don't notice it. Uh, when we collected the point cloud and started slicing the point cloud up, we did see that. Um, we were able to provide that to our engineers, which was very helpful. Um, you know, if we went down there with traditional survey and just took a couple shots, we may have missed that. Uh, so that, that's some uh, advantages to roadways and highways. Uh, utility scanning. Uh, we do, you know, here in Virginia, there's a, a lot of work for Dominion. Uh, laser scanning can collect uh, line heights. We can collect sag. We can calculate the connection points. Uh, without having to touch anything or any any heavy duty calculations uh, the way that we used to do it. We can do a scan and get a, a full picture of every line, you know, all the different heights. We can figure the separations. Uh, we do this a lot on railroad crossing jobs. You know, clearance is an issue. Uh, whether it's going across a railroad or a road, you want to know what the low wire is to, to the road. Um, we can figure the sags. Uh, we can collect all that data. And also another, um, another advantage is working around railroads is we can do it from not being within the railroad right away. Um, again, we can collect the data without having to put our guys there. Um, 
the permits to do this are pricey and it's, it's takes a while to be able to get the proper flagman and the permits in, in line to be able to walk across a railroad. So we're able to do this all from the side without getting a permit and we don't have to risk getting a fine. Um, the fines are also very high uh, for, for getting into a railroad right away if you don't have your permits in line. Uh, there on the, the upper left is where we drew some of these SAGs based off the point cloud data, calculated the clearances, the dashed line on the bottom is the existing grade um, that we use. The other one there in the middle, that's just the, the raw point cloud. You can see the lines going across the, um, the rails. There are some shadow areas from the side, but we were able to get plenty of, of information for what we need. You can definitely take a measurement from the, the low point to the rails anywhere you wanted. And uh, there at the bottom is just another topographic map that we created. Um, that's, you know, a combination of, you know, cyclone model and uh, CloudWorks to bring it in AutoCAD. Uh, encroachment surveys, this comes up here in Richmond quite a bit. Uh, everything is, you know, the property lines or right-of-way lines for the city blocks usually run right down the face of the building. So anything that is built off the building, whether or not it's an awning, a window ledge, it could be a valve, they're, they're encroaching into the right-of-way. Um, City of Richmond asked us to do encroachment surveys. Uh, this is, there on the left is, this is a, just a, a normal looking street, but as you can kind of see the, um, you have some awnings, some other poles and things that are hanging off the building. On the right is a screenshot from CAD. Uh, there across the bottom, it's an elevation view. There across the bottom, you can see where it points to the right of way line on the face of the building. And we mapped everything that was sticking out into the into the right of way. You know, the, there's mailboxes, uh, different kinds of covers and drains. Uh, so it's a it's an easy way to be able to to get all those encroachments, especially if they're above ground and you can't reach them with a with a tape measure. Uh, a lot of times in the city we have roof overhangs. Uh, the roof overhangs are encroach into the right of way or maybe a neighboring property. Uh, we'll collect that data with laser scanning. Uh, window wells up on upper levels, maybe three or four stories up, we can collect those and see how far they stick out into the right of way or maybe onto an adjoining property uh, without actually having to get up there and, and touch them or stand at the ground and you know may almost pull a tape measure out and take a guess. Um, it took the guesswork out. Uh, you know, Used to be when I started surveying, you would kind of stand under it, hold the tape and go, okay, well, that looks like it's a foot. That must be a foot overhang. Uh, I found out when I did, once we've started laser, laser scanning, it's not always a foot, it's not always eight inches or anything that makes sense. And actually it varies sometimes. Um, so we were able to, to get a lot more accurate data for these encroachment surveys. Uh, architectural surveys, um, this, this example here, this is, was at Chesterfield Town Center. This is a mall uh, here in Chesterfield. They have in the corridors of the mall, the, as you see there in the background, the, the upper area is, is open and has a lot of windows. Depending on the time of the day, a lot of light came through. I guess it was causing a lot of unnecessarily heat, um, maybe even glare and other issues. So. Our client was hired to hang up these baffles that cover those up. They had to hang up in the ceiling. Um, and they had specific locations where the baffles had hangers. And they wanted to figure out how they were going to mount these to the steel beams in the ceiling and how they were going to hang under the slopes that go down the side. So we went down the corridor. And, and did several scans and brought that data in and generated the map you see there on the upper left. Um, you can see that we were able to figure the slopes of the ceiling um, and almost give them a, a up and over as well. We also calculated the center line of the, um, the corridor and you know showed the steel. Um, that way, when they were on the ground with these baffles, they could line everything up. And when they went to hang it up, everything fit perfect. Uh, there was no rework in the field. Uh, there on the bottom right, 
uh, you can see that we'd actually tied this into some column lines because um, we had the plans and that way everything we did was relative to the some of the design plan or some of the architectural plans that they already had uh, but this was a, a real successful job um, again we were able to collect that data without having a, a lift um, or a ladder or anything unsafe for our guys we did it all from the ground uh, continuing on with uh, architectural surveys this is hospitality house this is in williamsburg um, this is a, a historic hotel. We were um, hired to develop floor plans on this. Uh, they, they did not have any current plans for this. Then it had been several additions. There was a lot of different rooms and they were converting this to student housing and they needed some mapping and we needed to get it, needed to get it pretty quick. Um, so we went and looked at it and decided that that laser scanning would probably be the the best approach uh, we went in through through the building we used two teams um, with two laser scanners in about two weeks and we went through every room um, on a, a survey like this you can kind of tell there on the bottom left you can see a little bit of it the laser scanner is actually sitting on wheels um, it's on a cart and we can push it around so we'll go from room to room take all the scans um, in the background there, you'll see some of our paper targets. We'll use those paper targets to help link the different scans together, um, develop one large point cloud. Then we can take a slice of that point cloud and bring it into AutoCAD and we can draw the floor plans. You know, this particular job, the floor plans had to be within about an inch. Um, so we had plenty of data to do that. Let's see here. Next screen. This was our deliverable. This is what the deliverable looked like, just a, a basic floor plan. The, this particular architect that we were working with, they didn't work with point clouds and they didn't care how we collected the data. Um, they just wanted the floor plans. Um, some architects we work with, they, they use the point clouds. They use Revit. They do all their own mapping. We would go in on a job like this and just do, it would just be for collection and we'd hand off the point cloud. They do all their own mapping. This particular one, um, we did the collection of the point cloud and the mapping. Um, as you can see there, it may be hard to see, but we, we mapped every room, every column, every doorway, stairs, ramps. Um, there was several parking garages. We mapped those. Uh, we've done surveys similar to this where we show spot elevations in every room. We could show ceiling heights. Um, that's another um, key advantage to to having laser scanning because um, once you have the data scanned you always have it if you decide later that um, you want to go back and you really want to know where all the lights are located in a room you could do that um, if you want to know where receptacles were or you know for this particular job we didn't map where the windows were located our client wasn't concerned with that they only wanted doorways but they have that point cloud data now. If they want to know where the windows are, they could call call me up. We could look in the data and we could we can measure all those windows out for them without sending somebody back to the field. Um, so that's that's one key advantage to to laser scanning on on projects like this. Um, this this was a very successful project. It was I think it was about four stories and then several stories of parking garage. It, it was a, a large building. Uh, this is a uh, next one we'll talk about building monitoring. Um, this is our the scanner shown in this picture here is the, the P40. This is the one that's here at our Richmond office. Um, every once in a while we'll get a project like this where we need to go and you know check the walls over and over um, to see if something's moving. This particular building on the picture there on the left you can see that some of the bricks were failing. Um, it actually had dropped some bricks out. We would go, they would call us, you know, maybe every month, two months, and we would go out and scan it and we would do a comparison. Let them know what areas were bulging. You know, the ones that where you see the bricks missing, that's kind of obvious. Um, but laser scanning also, when you do the comparison, you can see the ones that aren't so obvious. Um, so we would go out, we have a really um, accurate control network um, as far as survey 
ground control, we would tie into the exact same control every time, set the scanner in the exact same locations, and then do a, uh, a comparison of the two clouds um, and see what, is, what has changed. Uh, there on the right, you can see that that building is, all the bricks have been skinned off. Um, we would also go back and check, you know, they, they weren't at this particular building, they weren't sure why the bricks were falling. What it was, it was an install issue. Um, and I guess they weren't anchored properly. Um, but after the bricks came down, we continued to scan and monitor a few times just to make sure there wasn't some other kind of structural issue that was causing the bricks to uh, come down. We typically do this. There's a couple different methods we can, a couple different ways we can go about this. We typically do it in 3D Reshaper. Um, this is a screenshot of that. You can set your tolerances um, to, to basically anything, but we would set the tolerances pretty tight and then compare the two point cloud. Um, usually we do a couple comparisons. I would take the current point cloud and compare it to maybe last month's point cloud and then also compare it to the original point cloud. And we would generate reports to show what kind of movement that they've had, how it's changed. Um, sometimes you have to take into consideration that there's a big, sw big swing and temperature change. We did do this year round. So if it's you know, 20 degrees outside and 100 degrees outside, you may have to allow for that a little bit. Um, but generally speaking, we would do those two reports. Um, what the, the graph on the, the right, that right shows is that the majority of the building when I did the comparison didn't move. Um, you see the pink line, um, everything pretty much lines up almost exactly every time. The red area there is anything that had moved between four hundredths of a foot and a half a foot. And you see the red lines there right in the middle of the screen. There's two lines. That was actually two bulges that were bulging out, it was a, a seam that had cracked. And when we did the comparison, it picked it up. So I was able to, to generate a report on those two areas and, and show them how much, the, how much it had changed. Uh, Revit models, uh, we do some Revit models in-house. Um, this was generated from, from point cloud data. This was a historic what the remains of a historic building, what it boils down, is really a wall is all that's left. This is down on Bell Island here in Richmond. It's a stabilization project. Uh, the wall um, is about the only thing that's left. Um, it's well over a hundred years old and they wanna save this and support it so, um, so the rest of it doesn't fall down. So really it's a irregular shape, um, it's, made, it's, it's brick, and you know, laser scanning was perfect. We went down here and did a, a couple laser scans of it, and the folks here were able to generate a Revit model and then come up with this elevation plan and even show how they would mount the brackets to it. Uh, next section is construction as built. The uh, we use laser scanning a lot for for as built. The the picture there on the left is a a utility is being put in. That particular job, they had a, a high definition model of everything on the site that was to be built. And we would go scan it and do a comparison of the point cloud data to the model that shows um, where it's supposed to be. And we had to give that to this contractor and tell them that it was correct before they would allow them to backfill. So we had a crew, this went on for a couple months that stayed out on the site. Every time they had a trench open or put a utility in, we would do a scan, process the scan data, compare it to um, where it was supposed to be built and give them the all clear and they would backfill it. Uh, the picture there on the right, we also do as built on high rise buildings. Uh, a lot of, you know, checking concrete, checking steel, this particular building each time they put up a different level, we had to check the steel location. They had a tolerance, I believe it was within one inch, uh, either way of where the steel could be for the windows to work, where they mounted them. The white stripes that are painted on that is what we were trying to collect. Uh, they were painted white because white is more reflective and it shows up better on the, in the point cloud. Um, 
white is, is or black and brown is still wouldn't show up as well. You can still get plenty of data, but it's not as clear. Um, it would show up as a light red in the point cloud where, you know, it would be a, a bright yellow or a green where the white was. So we would take each one of those spots, uh, map it out to a column line, um, tell our, our contractor that everything was within an inch, and then they would go up to the next section and so on. Uh, continuing on with the as-built, uh, another, another thing we do is floor flatness surveys. Uh, a lot of these buildings, you know, they'll, they'll pull the con pour the concrete and then maybe realize that um, it's out of level or it's got a ponding issue. This particular floor here did that, it was just that. It had some ponding issues. So we went in and, and scanned it and would relatively quickly make the map you see there on the, the bottom left. Uh, that was, a, I think, a, a two or three foot grid possibly with elevation spot shots. Uh, of course, we know what the elevation was supposed to be. Uh, they could do a comparison. They could see the low areas. Uh, the contractors could come in and decide how they were going to handle it, if they were just going to fill it in or uh, what their process would be. Uh, use a lot on that. Uh, the other picture there on the left is just more of uh, how we would map out steel um, and do and do checks on that. We, we have checked steel for being plumb. We check it sometimes for location, uh, lots of different things. But laser scanning is perfect for that because generally speaking, we can do it from the ground. Um, or even if we do it from the floor, we don't have to be right on the edge where we're tied off and, and deal with the rat lines and harnesses and those type of things. Uh, chemical plants. Uh, this is uh, where modeling really comes into play. Uh, we can from the point cloud, you can generate a, a very accurate model. Um, the models we do at chemical plants, usually hard surfaces or, you know, sometimes somewhere between 16th to an eighth of an inch tolerance. Um, we model irregular surfaces too. Um, but as you see there on the right, we, you can see every valve, handrail. Um, depending on what the client's needs are, you can model all the way down to every nut and bolt. Um, it all just depends on how much time we have to collect the data, uh, the resolution we use for the point cloud, and what the overall budget is on the, the project. Uh, chemical plants, you know, one of the advantages are, you know, they have a, a very expensive shutdown um, cost. So if they're going to switch out something, and let's say it's a condenser or something like that, the manufacturers they work with will give them a 3D model that shows all the connections, it shows the valves, it shows flanges, and you know how everything about it is, is in a 3D model form. We go out and scan the existing conditions and model all the flanges, the valves, and all of this, and our client can actually see how the condenser or whatever the object is is gonna fit in a computer screen they can come up with their construction sequence. They know if they've got to bring a crane in, if it's got to come through the top, if you've got to remove certain piping because there's no way it can go through the top, maybe it's got to come out the side. Um, they can figure all this out sitting at a desk um, and it saves on construction costs. Um, the last thing they want to do is if it's a, you know, a $10,000 a day shutdown for this particular um, project to find out that the flanges don't line up but the bolts don't match. And then it takes you a week or two to get things modified and weld, welded into place to make it work in the field. They can work all this out ahead of time. Um, so that, that comes into play a lot at, at chemical plants and also other places too. This is a uh, more modeling. Uh, this is a, a very, very high accuracy model of a attic area in an airplane. Um, so it doesn't always have to be something that a building or, you know, a site like a chemical plant. We can model objects, too. You can laser scan objects. Anything that has a lot of, uh, a lot of information that you need to collect that maybe is in a hard area to reach. Um, I did the, the laser scanning on this from down in the passenger area. All of this was, was from the ground. Um, we registered those scans together. and we're able to create this 3D model. Um, you can see all the ductwork. You can even see the, the speaker trays there. So if 
you had a project where maybe you needed to design some new ductwork through a tight area that was hard to reach and you didn't know if it was going to fit and um, needed to figure out what size piping you could get through there, 3D modeling um, would be a really good option for that because you can, you can scan this and figure it out, you know, just like with the chemical plants, you can do it from your desk. Um, you're not trying to, to fit things in the field and, and figure out how you're going to do it. Uh, I'd like to add this slide too. This is a uh, tower surveys. Um, do a lot of tower surveys because you a lot of times somebody needs to know the height um, or what angle something's facing at. Um, so laser scanning, we did this. This was about you know two or three scans. You did it from the ground, and we can very quickly tell. You know we can measure the heights. We could get elevations across beams. Um, Again, you know, I didn't, you know, I'm sure the, the guys on here, you may not be doing a lot of tower surveys, but at least um, you can see that you can collect data on a hard to reach item and take a lot of measurements from it uh, pretty easily. Condo plans, uh, we do a lot of condo plans. This is the gateway building again that we had several examples on. Uh, condo plans, uh, we have to do mapping that shows the different floor levels and also maps out the wall space that, that they own for the particular units. Uh, we laser scanned this building after it was built um, to make sure that it fit in within the envelope that it was supposed to. Uh, then we also laser scanned the inside and developed the condo plans. Uh, this is a just a screenshot that, that shows the, the plans where we measure the different levels and also the limits of the units. Uh, it's, it's just another tool. There's other ways you can do this, but laser scanning, you know, comes in real handy on a, a really tall building that, that's, that's hard to, hard to reach. Uh, really no other way to check those measurements. Uh, so we were able to do that with the scanner. Hey, Mark. Yes. Um, have you ever tried the tower survey technique on trees, like for a specimen tree, for example? Yes. Yes, you can. We've, done a lot of work around airports and you need to, maybe they have a, a certain height that something can be from the, the runway and we'll go and, and survey the end of the, the runway and then laser scan the, the, the trees to get the heights to see what kind of clearance uh, they have. We also do this a lot on um, solar projects where maybe they've cleared out 100 acres and they're going to put solar panels in and you've got your tree line around the outer edge and they want to see, you know, how the, how bad the trees are going to block the sun. Um, so we'll go in and scan it and, and you can take the, take the heights out of it. Um, pretty much just like the tower here, if it's line of sight and you can see it, you can scan it. So if we can see the top of the tree, um, you can take measurements off of it. Uh, this is uh, this is one of my favorite jobs um, that we worked on. This is the the movie Max. Uh, we use laser scanning to help the special effects team in this movie. Uh, you know, this this movie was about a a um, service dog that was was overseas, and his owner um, his owner was killed, and he came back to live with the family, which may be a little far fetched, but it was a um, basically a family adventure movie. Um, part of that movie, they blew up a railroad bridge with a missile. This um, movie actually was filmed in North Carolina. Um, the railroad bridge was from 1933. It had some historical value, so obviously, and it was still in use. So obviously, they're not really going to blow this this up. But it had a a scene in the movie where the truck crashes down into the stream, and it's got a bunch of rockets and missiles in the back, and it goes off and the, the rocket actually goes through the middle of the bridge and, and, and loads it up. We, um, we needed to work with the special effects team to help them put their movie set together with the actual bridge in the field. So we went and did a, a scan of the movie set or of the, the bridge in the field, which is there on the right. That's me on the right doing the scan. And we scanned the movie set, which was in a warehouse probably 100 miles away. Um, they had marks on the bridge where they knew they were going to put the two together. We created a OBJ file, which is a mesh file that could go into the software that they use and um, they could put the two pieces together. 
This is... I think it's good to point out as well that we did get proper permitting for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we did. Um, yeah, the, the rails were closed here. We did have the permits in place. Um, did have permission to be on there. Um, there was no fines. Uh, but yeah, so they, they actually had the flagman for us. The, the, it was a very cool experience because actually the, the whole team that was working on the movie set was there um, with us. So they, they had the proper flagman. Um, but we, so there at the bottom left, that's another picture of the bridge where we scanned it. The upper left is the movie set. Um, this is what it looked like after the rocket went through it. Um, it doesn't look like it, but all of those rails and everything there are made out of foam. Um, they were singed to look black like they blew up. So we went through and we did a bunch of scans on this. I mean, we probably did you know, 20, 30 scans on the movie set and the bridge itself, just to make sure that we had every, every inch covered. We did take pictures with all the scans because the colors being projected on it um, was very important to them to make it look realistic um, in the movie. And, you know, it, it did, it looked really good in the movie, um, the way they put it all together. Um, even in the movie, somebody fell through the hole that the rocket came through. So it was really, really cool how they, how they did that. Um, here's some, uh, more pictures from the scan. The upper left is the raw point cloud of the bridge. Uh, the bottom left is me at the movie set. Uh, you can see there we had the scanner on the wheels. Um, that's that's the wheels that we that I was talking about earlier that we actually use in the the buildings. That way we can move it from room to room pretty easy. Um, but we did a lot scans from underneath. We did scans on top. Uh, that's me sitting there on the right. Uh, you can see that it's just your your standard warehouse um, where they where they film the movie. Uh, very successful. Clients was were were happy with us. They they were able to take the the two together, and I I thought it was a a very good movie. All right, so that is um that is the end of my slides. Um, before I hand it off to Jeff, I do have a couple um couple other things I want to show you. Sarah, any questions or? Nope, you're good. Keep rolling. Okay. All right. So this is um this is a raw point cloud. This is an in cyclone model. Um, this is our commons area here at Timmins and Richmond. Um, I wanted to give everyone an idea of what one scan would look like. This is a medium resolution scan. It uh. It's intensity based. The blue is a, a higher intensity uh, because it was probably a white surface. The, the red you see may be brown or black, um, but this is just one point cloud. This took about a minute and 40 seconds to do. Um, as you could tell, we can flip up. Hopefully it's keeping up. You can see it from the outside, but we could use this to map out floor plans, take measurements from, from anything in the point cloud, but that'll give you an idea of what one single point cloud looks like. And then I'm gonna show you one more thing real quick. This is the TrueView that I talked about earlier that was the free download um, that anybody can do. It's an internet explorer based. Uh, if we do uh, point clouds and we take pictures, uh, you guys can get this, you can download it, we can make you the true view files. And just like a Google Street View, um, each one of these triangles is where the actual scanner was sitting. You can jump between them and you can take measurements from this. You can mark up notes. Uh, one thing that's really cool is if you put this on a shared network somewhere, if you have a team that's working on it, you can, one person can mark up notes and take measurements and save it and another team member can go into the same file and view those or make their own markups. It's not a design grade tool, but it's a great planning tool. If you wanted to quickly know how big this column was or how tall a doorway was, or if you had clearance issues, um, TrueView is a great tool for that. And that is, with that, I am going to hand it over to Jeff. Thanks, Mark. Um, as I um, was introduced earlier, I'm Jeff Smeraldo. I run the Northern Virginia uh, survey group up here in, for Timmins. Um, I also run the rail services uh, group and um, talk to you a little bit about some of the uh, other technology that we use. I've been with Timmins for about five and a half years, maybe. 
uh, but I've been surveying for about 25 years as well. Next. So we, we use a combination of uh, some additional tools that um, we have a, a laser scanner like Mark had mentioned, but we also have this hybrid total station and kind of what it is, is is a combination of both a total station and a laser scanner. Just like the laser scanning that Mark talked about, we can get the hard to reach areas or we can do some quality control or we can pick up you know data um, where we can't safely put somebody um, or in some cases when we're working on a lot of design build projects like we do here, um, we can do on the fly data acquisition while the crew is maybe doing one task, they can switch it over to the scanning mode, collect some data for maybe the contractor we're working with, and we can give him some of the information right there in the field. It's not as accurate as the total station, I mean as the, uh, the uh, laser scanner, but it does, does help. And just like what Mark was talking about, the floor flatness and verticality applications, we can do that as well and we have some apps that can tell us some of the information and then go back to the office later and produce a report for the for the client next so as i mentioned some of the advantages is this is a lighter instrument it's very portable um, it's the same instrument that they're using for their other their, their other work um, so it increases their capability um, and we can supplement the data that we do with conventional surveying the same data set and acquire the information on the fly. Disadvantages, it's a less dense point cloud as you can see in the picture there up in the upper left. Um, the data is very accurate, but it's not as accurate as the laser scanner and it's slower data collection. So, you know, instead of a million points per second, it's only 30,000 points per second, so. Um, here's a kind of an application that we're talking about. So here's a museum that we've been working on. Um, and the lines on the and the floor that you see there are the actual column lines that the designers, you know, kind of estimated. And we laid those out. And as the contractor took the walls down, we were able to scan inside there. And you know, of course, when you're using old historical plans, because this museum was built in the uh, late '60s, you know, it may not match what's actually built. So this would give them the capability to see if what was designed is going to actually be actually going to fit or did they have to make some modifications? Um, the other advantages like Mark talked about was once you have that data, you can always go back later and say, well, you know, something further down the line didn't fit as designed. So where do we have the information? Yes, we do. We can figure that out. Um, so some other technology that we have that uses scanning as well is this Amberg rail system. The Amberg is basically a trolley that we push on the track and it measures the existing conditions of the track. Um, and we can monitor track movement. We can use, uh, see if uh, objects near the track will clear the trains. And we can also use it to assist contractors to build uh, track systems. So when we do as existing conditions, we can get the position, the height, um, which is the elevation, the gauge, which is the how, what's the width between the tracks, um, the super of elevation, so if the, the track is tilted for an embankment, um, the verse signs, which is a, a measure of how plumb it is relative to itself, and the twist to see if like some of the rails are out of, out of alignment. Um, the picture on the uh, left is the silver line up here in the Washington DC area, about the only thing this can't tell you is when this project is going to be available to the public. So don't ask me in that in the questions. <laughs> so move on to the next one. So for track monitoring, so here's an example. So I know a lot of folks here are, are uh, in the architecture world. That's a, a project currently under construction in the District of Columbia. It's right over the L'Enfant Plaza Wilmata Station. So what WMATA requires, if you're going to be building above one of their stations or one of their rail lines and you're going to be working with footers or adding piles or in this case or adding load to this building, they want a survey of the rails of the conditions they are before you start doing the work, during the work, and then after the work to see if there's any significant movement. Um, so what we'll do is we'll use the Amberg, we'll put it on the track, and we'll create a baseline set of data and then again, you know, measure it before, during, and after. 
And this allows, you know, the WMATA to ensure that, no, that your project doesn't impact their active revenue tracks. So when we do construction applications, we might measure the tracks as they've been installed or, uh, or maybe need repair. And then we can create a file that says, and we can, we can take that data, compare it to the proposed or the, you know, the design file and say, what are the corrections that need to be made? We can create a file, put in that machine that's in the upper left-hand corner, which is called the tamper. And then the tamper operator makes the adjustments to the track. What this does is allow us to keep moving the um, process along without having to you know, measure data, go back to the contractor, say, hey, these are the corrections you make, he fixes it, and then you know, it's this longer cycle. This probably cuts down the production time about 75%. So, next. So just like the scanner, um, this, is one, this is one of the models that we use. Uh, we'll put a scanner right on the on the on the uh, Amberg, and uh, we'll push it along, and we can do a laser scan, and then we can inject a model of the outline of the car, and that's called the dynamic envelope, and you can see that over there on the right hand side, and then we can see how close objects are to the car as it passes through, if it were actually passing through. This allows us to see if something that was newly constructed um, actually will interfere with the with the movement of the train. So it's a great way to see if your design works. Next. And real quickly, I'm gonna show you a little video that we put together so you can actually see this system in action. So that's pretty much all I have. I know I went through it quickly. We're really short on time, so I'll be willing to take any questions um, uh, that you may have. While we are waiting for them to come in, I just want to remind everybody that certificates of completion for your AIA credit will um, be sent out via email from me, um, Sarah Snately, after the, this presentation um, is done. And just a reminder to register for our upcoming presentations if you haven't already done so. You can see, find them on our website at www.timmins.com. Um, and if nobody has any questions so far, none are coming in. You look like you guys did a great job of explaining everything. Every, nobody has any questions. <laughs> so um, I think we are good on time. And if anybody does have any questions, feel free to email us. Um, our contact information will be sent out with a certificate of completion. So we'll, there will be plenty of opportunity to answer anything that comes up after that. So. Um, thank you all for joining us. Thanks, Mark thank and Jeff, for your information, and hope everyone has a great rest of the week. Right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.